and welcome to the first episode of a new program here at Can TV called Health Affairs A to Z. This is a show by the University of Illinois at Chicago College of Nursing with the goal of talking and discussing things all health related. My name is Dr. Denise Bachwald. I am a family nurse practitioner at UIC as well as a faculty uh, member in the College of Nursing. This is a call-in show and we would love for anyone with a question for our guests to give us a call. Today, I'd like to introduce today's guest. This is Cindy Klinger. She, has, she is a registered and licensed dietitian and a health coach. She has a master's degree in nutrition. And Cindy has worked in, with all ages. She's worked at the nursing home, counseling the elderly. She's worked at WIC, which stands for Women's, Infants, and Children, which is counseling new mothers um, about diet, and as well as um, working as a wellness coach for employee groups. She recently launched an integrated focused health practice in Andersonville. And today we're going to talk about my favorite topic, which is eating <laughs> and healthy eating and drinking uh, for the summer. So welcome, Cindy. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So summer barbecues in Chicago are a pa uh, pastime. Um, Memorial Day is around the uh, Memorial Day is around the corner. And 4th of July will be after that, and right after that will be Labor Day. And so a lot of people like to grill out. So I sure. thought we'd talk today a little bit, asking you questions about how to grill and enjoy the summer foods, um, but do it in a healthy way. Absolutely. So first of all, um, my family loves to grill outside meat. We sometimes grill out every day. And I'd like to know what meats are the healthiest. Some There's brats, there's hamburger steaks um, chicken ribs so what sure. do you recommend is the healthiest meat to uh, grill outside so you want to just stick to plain lean meats and poultry um, you want to avoid processed meats as much as possible so that would be like sausages hot dogs and brats because those have more preservatives and are very high in sodium so again the lean poultry turkey chicken fish and then um, grass-fed beef is the ideal choice if you're going to choose beef. So grass-fed beef, basically that means that the cows have actually eaten grass, which is what they're supposed to eat in their natural state, as opposed to corn. Okay. Fed corn. So that what that does is it allows the cows to actually have a higher fatty acid content, so better healthy fats, which in turn is better for us. Okay. Now I've bought grass-fed beef before, and it has a weird smell to it. Yeah, I, mean, I, thought, I thought it was spoiled, <laughs> and then I thought it couldn't be spoiled. It still had the ex, you know the correct date on it. Yeah, people sometimes it takes a little bit of getting used to if you're used to eating grain-fed meat, which is the conventional meat you know that you'll find more regularly in restaurants and mm -hmm. fast food places and the grocery stores. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. It's a little gamier, I would say. So it does taste different too. Yeah, it will taste a little bit different. So don't let that <laughs> put you off. Mm -hmm. But is it more expensive? It can be a little bit more expensive, um, yeah, so that's something to take into account. Okay. So when grilling, we like to put barbecue sauce on it, so I wanted to ask you about the barbecue sauce. What is, what is your feeling about barbecue sauce? So I actually have an example of a sauce here that I just wanted to show the label of. Okay. You can zoom in on this. Okay. So I'll just read a couple of the ingredients. The first one would be tomato puree, so that's fine. But then the next ingredient is high fructose corn syrup. And that's um, a, a sweetener that we want to avoid as much as possible. It can contribute to things like diabetes and obesity, weight gain. Um, so they have corn syrup instead of sugar? Yeah, instead of sugar. Mm -hmm. And really, we don't need any sweetener in a, in a barbecue sauce. Um, it's ideal to make your own based with um, oil and vinegar and herbs and um, kind of avoid the thicker, more sugary sauces. Okay, um, so it's better to eat, to make it yourself at home? Exactly. Than to buy the bottled stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and there's some other ingredients in here that we would want to avoid, but, um, but actually marinating your meat is a good idea because it can cut down on some of the, um, there's actually cancer-causing compounds when grilling meats, so actually marinating is a good choice, but you want to avoid those um, kind of thick sugary sauces. Okay. Um, so when I like to cook burgers, I grill them and I, the fat drips off mm -hmm. and it flames up and makes the burger nice and tasty. Mm -hmm. So does that make the burger healthier if I grill the fat off? So that's a really good question. Like I just mentioned, 
grilling can cause some, um, grilling um, meats especially, like anything with protein in particular, mm -hmm. can have some cancer causing compounds. So what we want to do to avoid that, there are several things we can do, so that's the good news. Um, but yeah, those fat drippings, the fat actually causes the smoke and that charred flavor and that Oh, it causes cancer, is, or can lead to cancer? It, it increases the risk if you're doing it on a regular basis. Okay. Um, once in a while, I wouldn't worry so much about it. So what can we but, do? So one thing is marinating your meats for a half hour to two hours at least. That can actually, it kind of creates like a seal or a barrier between the oh. grill and the meats. So that can help. Um, also reducing the cooking time and cooking on lower heats can help. Um, and then cutting things into smaller pieces, so making meats into a kebab, using fish, things that cook faster will cut down on the cooking time. Um, and then cooking uh, vegetables, grilling vegetables as much as you can instead of meats, because again, the protein and fat are some of the things that can increase that, the okay. charred cancer. Risk. Does it matter if it's chicken and, you know, when you barbecue chicken? Chicken can also have the charred, you know, that charred okay. blackness on it. So um, if, if you do get that charredness, you can just shave some of that off before you serve it and that can also help. Oh, okay. Um, so, the it's, I think the um, farmer's markets just opened up in the past few weeks. I, I went to exciting. one in my hometown and uh, all they had was asparagus. <laughs> so, when do, what, when do the foods come in season and when can we'll see more at the farmer's market? Yeah, so the Chicago, Illinois growing season, the big times are June through October. So coming up soon. So June will be lettuces, berries like blueberries, strawberries, um, cauliflower, broccoli, beets, things like that. And then mm -hmm. July will be coming into cucumber, eggplant, um, and things like that. So corn. So you'll have more variety come July 4th. Okay. Yeah, and is it there. okay to eat a lot of the stuff that's in season that month and then switch to a different food the next month? Yeah, you do want a lot of variety um, in your diet. And then eating foods that are in season are great because you're going to capture more of the nutrient content. So foods that are local don't have to travel cross-country or from different countries, right? So you're retaining more of that nutrient because the time from picking to the time of eating is, is it's when you shorter. Get oh, okay. So you get more nutrients um, and more taste and flavor as well. Okay. So double bonus. So when you um, go to the farmer's market, mm -hmm. is it cheaper to buy your produce at the farmer's market than at the grocery store? It can often be cheaper, again, because of the, the local, you know, the local content is you know, it doesn't have to drive far. It's not, it's often smaller farms that mm -hmm. are delivering it. So you don't have to pay some of those extra costs. Um, and I really recommend getting to know your farmer too. Okay. Um, that's How do great, you do that? So just talking, asking questions, striking up conversations. So if you're at the local farmer's market, farmers because Sometimes you get little recipe tips and different ideas on how to prepare foods, which is great. You try new varieties of foods, which is kind of fun. You might see something you've never seen before and you don't know how to prepare it, but you want to try it. And also sometimes farms might not be labeled as USDA certified organic, but their growing practices are basically organic or similar to organic. So you can feel confident knowing how they're you know, treating their, their land and mm -hmm. their produce. And so what does exactly does organic mean? I've always wondered that. Organic practices means that they can't use a lot of those chemical sprays, the chemical pesticides that are sprayed on conventional produce. Okay. So you're getting less of those chemicals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, now you show, I want to show this overhead. You brought this interesting uh, paper. Sure, yeah. And you called this, you were telling me this earlier, this is called the, you, now that you mentioned pesticides. Oops. Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. So... Um, you have this called Dirty 12 and Clean 15. Uh, what yeah. does that mean? So this is a great guide. This is from the Environmental Working Group. And um, the Dirty 12 basically shows us which foods have the highest pesticide load. So ideally, we'd be buying all of our food organic if possible, right, just to, again, limit the amount of pesticides we're getting. But, you know, understandably, many people can't afford to buy everything organic. So the Dirty 12 basically shows us which foods... Let me see if I can zoom this up closer so our viewers can read it. There we go. Yeah, and that just shows us which foods have the highest pesticide loads. So 
if you're going to the grocery store and trying to decide which food should I buy organic, which can I get by buying conventionally, the Dirty 12 are the most important ones to buy organic. So this year, it changes a little bit from year to year, but this year the top ones are strawberries, apples, nectarines, and then peaches, celery, grapes. And a lot of these have thinner skins. And that's how the pesticides actually soak into the fruit itself? Yeah. So if you are if you don't end up buying them organic, I would recommend peeling them. But again, we'd want to eat the peel ideally if we can because it has fiber and some other nutrients that we would want to get. And mm -hmm. then the Clean 15 is the opposite. So those are the foods that we can kind of get away a little bit more with buying conventionally because they have the lowest pesticide load. And those would be avocados, corn, pineapples, cabbage, sweet peas, and then you can go on. And some of those have thicker peels so that, you know, once you cut through it, it doesn't soak in as much okay. like we were saying. Okay, so it looks like we have a caller. Caller, go ahead. Yeah, so thank you. I have a question about portion control. You're talking about, you know, grilling outside. Um, is there, I've heard the old saying that when you're talking about meat to eat about the size of your fist. Is, is that right or how much is, is too much? Yeah, actually about the size of the palm of your hand is a good portion for meat and protein, which would be about three to four ounces generally. Um, but yeah, about the size of the palm of your hand. And also, which we can show a little bit later, um, thinking of dividing up your plate in a beneficial way, eating about a quarter of your plate as, as a portion of protein. Is it the same for men and women? same portion size? No, men would be a little bit more, like four to six ounces of, okay. of meat. Yeah. So he could have two palms worth. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> you could get away with that. <laughs> Does that answer your question, caller? Oh, you must have gone. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So when we were just talking about the uh, fruits, so you brought, um, we were, we were going to talk a little bit about sugary drinks. Mm -hmm. Like my kids really love lemonade and those, uh, mixed, you know, the fruit mixed drinks that you can just add water to. Um, so how can I get my family to drink something that's healthier? And they don't like water. Is there any way to, you know, make water? Yeah, so sodas are a big thing at barbecues and picnics. So we want to try to avoid sodas as much as possible. That's how we get a lot of our sugar throughout the day. And I also recommend avoiding the artificial sweeteners from diet soda too. So something, I brought a little um, something here that we can show okay. as an alternative. Um, yeah, so I just okay. mold up a little bit of blackberries and blueberries. And mold, you mean mashed them up? Yeah, I kind of just mashed it up very lightly, so it just took a minute. And then, oops, oh. Oh. And then right. we're going to put sparkling water. Sparkling water that bubbles <laughs> over. But yeah, some sparkling water if you like that carbonation, or you can just use regular water. But we can kind of just add that, and you can see that it bubbles up just like soda. Okay. And it has some natural sweetener and flavoring, um, and you don't have to add any any sugar to that. It just adds a little bit of a, a nice little flavor. And then... Um, that looks good. <laughs> yeah, or you can add a little bit of juice, 100% juice as well. Now, does this count as, like, you know, you're supposed to eat so many servings of fruit a day? Does this count as a fruit serving? That would, yeah, especially if you're eating the what's on the bottom, which I would recommend because it's a little extra fiber and, and fruit. Fruit the daily recommendation is about two cups a day. So yeah, that, as much as you would put in there, you can get a little bit of that taken care of with your drink in a healthier way. Okay, and we have another caller. Go ahead, caller. Yes, I wanted to go back over uh, what you were talking about earlier in terms of marinating, um, I suppose, larger pieces of meat uh, or uh, chicken. I mean, it's not easy to marinate a fish, for instance, or a hamburger. But um, I was very interested in, like, what you were saying. It creates this barrier between the heat source and the actual food. Uh, are there any particular marinade recipes that you would um, recommend? Because maybe some people aren't uh, familiar with how to marinate this, this kind of thing. And I think from a health perspective, I never recognized that that was really something that we should all be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I recommend doing like an olive oil and vinegar base. So you could do olive, you can do simple marinades of olive oil, apple cider vinegar, or lemon juice, and just cut up herbs. Chopped up herbs would be great, or dried herbs. Um, and then you could also do, um, you know, even a little bit of a rub. But um, about, I would say, um, a half a cup to per pound of meat would be the ideal marinade. All mixed up. 
yeah, mixed up. Um, but you want to, again, avoid those kind of thicker sauces with sugar and just stick to, like, yeah, the vinegar base with olive oil. Okay. Um, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so back to the sugary drinks. What about when it's, like, really hot in the summer and... Um, do, does everybody need a sports drink? You know, the, the sports drinks and those energy drinks are very popular. Sure. So um, you really don't need a sports drink unless you are sweating profusely or exercising, you know, pretty heavily exercising for more than an hour. Um, but again, you know, in summer it can be you're sweating more often, especially on really hot days. So um, here's a popular kind of sports drink type like a common sports drink that people might drink. Um, as you can see, there's it's not really a natural coloring, so there's food coloring in there, there's sugar. So again, we'd want to avoid that um, and trying to choose a more natural type of drink. So coconut water is a great hydrator um, and has the electrolytes, which are mostly sodium and potassium that we would need um, to kind of replenish and rehydrate. So with coconut water, you can um, you can add a little bit of a, like a pinch of sea salt and even some 100% juice again if you want to add a little bit more sodium. But that's a nice alternative to kind of the the heavily more processed sports drinks. Okay, so it's pretty much the the, the artificial coloring and there's artificial flavors in it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, that makes it less healthy. Right. Um, so if you're looking at a drink, how do you know if it's healthy or not? You know, I was at the grocery store the other day, and the, the aisle is full of a thousand brands of different kinds of waters and drinks, and I, I was overwhelmed. Yeah. yeah, so it depends. I mean, I would stick to, for juices, you want it to be 100% juice with no additives, no added sugars. So when you look um, at the label, it just says juice? Yeah, it should say 100% juice, so no extra sugars or okay. anything else. And then also, I would try to avoid the artificial sweeteners too, because those are, again, more chemicals. So we just want to stick to simple ingredients, things you can pronounce, um, maybe things sweetened with stevia instead of um, like any artificial ingredients. Okay. All right, looks like we have another caller. Go ahead, caller. Yes, thank you for taking my question. I've been using agave instead of sugar. Is that a good substitute? Agave instead of sugar. Um, you know, agave is a little bit controversial. It was popular for a while because they thought it was it didn't raise your blood sugar quite as much as sugar. Um, but now there's been some backlash against it because they're finding that it actually does. So I would stick more toward like honey if possible if you want to use a sweetener. Or again, the um, stevia is a great choice because that really doesn't affect your blood sugar. It's made out of an herb, um, but you can find it in packets or drops. And then there's also something now called monk fruit extract, which is similar to stevia in that it doesn't really raise your blood sugar that much. Mm, that's so that's another good choice. But yeah, honey maple syrup would probably be best over agave. Mm -hmm. Is agave, are they finding it's harmful or just not doesn't have the same health benefits as? Yeah, the, it's kind of the claims didn't necessarily match the... Okay. The actual, what they were saying. So, and it again, it raises your blood sugar a little bit more than thought previously. So, you know, just be careful of that and try to stick to kind of the old oldies but goodies of honey and maple syrup. Okay. Um, so I wanted to show something else that you brought for us today. Sure. And you mentioned this earlier when you were talking to the caller about the meat. Let's see if we can get this on our overhead. Okay. Um, so tell me about this plate. You were kind of taught, mentioning this earlier. Yeah, so this is um, called My Plate, and it basically, this is a nice way to think of kind of like a healthy, balanced meal, kind of just holding that as a quick snapshot in your mind for a healthy, an average healthy meal. So basically you divide up a nine-inch plate into two parts, so 50%. So like this right here? Yeah, okay. down the middle here. And then you divide that one up one side up again into okay, quarters. Okay, so yeah, that there, okay. So half the plate would be filled with non-starchy vegetables. So those are things like salad, cauliflower, broccoli, green beans. Um, and then the other half of the plate would be divided up again into quarters. A quarter of the plate would be the protein. So that would be our chicken, meat, fish, or eggs. Um, and then the other quarter of the plate would be the starchy food. So that would be um, corn, peas, potatoes, or pastas or breads. 
Okay. So I only get to eat this much. Yeah, that would be kind of for a balanced meal, I know. <laughs> so really, we should all be eating more more non-starchy vegetables because a lot of a lot of people's plates are kind of switched around where it's uh, larger amounts of the protein and starch and small amounts of the non-starchy vegetables. So we want to kind of flip that around. Okay. And then there's um, up here, you can see there's a little bit of, for our calcium, you can have um, a glass of milk and fruit as well to kind of round it out. Okay. Um, a caller, we have another caller. Go ahead, caller. Yes, hi. Listen, I'm calling in because you sort of scared me with that dirty list um, of all the things that have organic contaminants. And I was just wondering, since they seem to be all the things I really like to eat, mm -hmm. is there anything I can do if I don't have uh, organic available to me? I was sort of wondering, they seem to be so much more expensive in the market, the organic. Is it better to then buy these kinds of dirty vegetables and fruits at the farmer's market, does that ensure that it doesn't have pesticides? Could you just help me out on that? Sure. So buying at a farmer's market does not... I'm going to put this back up for our viewers. Oh, yeah, sure. The farmer's market does not ensure that you're getting organic food. Again, some of the booths will say organic or, again, talking to the farmer, um, you know, it might say, they might say that they are pretty much following organic practices. But if you can't buy, if you can't afford or can't find the you know, the Dirty 12 in organic varieties. You can wash your fruits and vegetables with 2% of a salt water mixture. That may remove most of the, the pesticides that are kind of on the outside of the skins. Um, and, and washing it in cold water also can help, as well as peeling things. So if you're buying the, the highest pesticide foods or apples, peaches, nectarines, you can peel the skins and just eat the inside if you're worried. Mm -hmm. So the pesticides can make you sick? Are there any healthy pesticides that they've developed anything that doesn't hurt? Well, there are natural pesticides, which are, you know, like some, in, like more insects and other herbals. Um, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily make you sick right away, but over time it can kind of add to our toxic burden, our toxic load in our bodies. Okay. So we do want to avoid them, you know, as much as possible. So just to summarize, because we're getting close to running out of time, for grilling, I should pick more uh, chicken and turkey or grass-fed grass beef. Grass-fed beef, yeah. And if you are looking for lower-fat cuts of meat, beef, you want to look for rounds or loins. Oh, that it, it says it in the word, oh, round. Yeah, like a sirloin or something like that. Oh, okay. So I would that would be my meat. For my fruits and vegetables, I should try to get my clean 15. Yes. <laughs> I Talk really to my farmer at the farmer's market. Right and choose uh, not store-bought drinks, but rather make my own with water, adding fruit. Um, yeah, that would be ideal. Okay. And then one other thing I just wanted to mention was um, if you are at a picnic or out at a barbecue, food safety, so leaving foods out, how long should we leave foods out, right? So we, yeah. if, especially if the weather's really hot, like above 90 degrees, you don't want to leave food out of a cooler for more than an hour and keeping a cooler full of food, you know, you want to keep that in the shade, keeping that as cool as possible okay. as well. So that's another thing I just wanted to touch on. And that's all food, like the salads and, you know, potato salad and things like that. And meats, yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted, we talked earlier about, about uh, farmer's markets and I just wanted to direct our viewers to our, um, to this website. This is the City of Chicago and this is, if you go to cityofchicago.org, they have a whole page dedicated to the uh, farmer's markets in Chicago, and there's, I think, 40 or 50, something like that. And you'll see here, um, the farmer's markets, they have a schedule where you can go through and see which day of the week you would like to see. Um, you can go to the farmer's market and then the locations. And another thing that's pop you can also download from here is this brochure of the 2016 um, farmers markets. There's several new ones. And this is another chart that may be helpful. Um, this shows the months that that particular fruit or vegetable is in season. So I complained about asparagus being the only thing at my farmers market <laughs> and you can see here it is May through June and after that asparagus is done. So beginning in June I can start seeing our beans and then July the bell peppers. So that's available. Again this is on the city of Chicago dot uh, org and and just do a search for farmers markets and I think that would be a great um, 
a great resource for our viewers who yeah, are interested absolutely. in taking up some of your tips that you did to, that you provided with us today. Yeah, great, and have fun most of all. You're right. <laughs> Enjoy your food. So thank you for watching our show. Be sure to check in with us next week at 3:30 here on Can TV. Thanks.